comes to newborns, we can look and we can listen for outward signs that something may be wrong. But today we are talking about internal issues that may not be so obvious. Joining us on the Crafty Group for today, baby whisperer Dorothy Wade and chiropractor Dr. Adila Ifes. Good morning, guys. Good, Good morning. morning. Lovely to have you here. First up, Dorothy, what are the most common reasons that babies won't settle? Um, they're overtired, they're hungry, too much movement, colic, reflux, in pain, and just being, those are the most sort of common ones. So pretty much everything is what yeah. you're just saying there. Um, Adela, what do you look, I mean, what do you look for when a baby is brought to you? But people either bring their babies to us because they're well and they're having a wellness check, or because something's not quite right, but uh, either scenario I look at the same things. I look at their head shape, I look at whether they can turn their head well to both sides, mm -hmm. I ask mum if they can feed well on both sides, um, I look to see if that baby's in any sign of distress tone, okay. tension, and then I basically check their spine, their pelvis, their whole body to make sure it's actually appearing to function and is functioning as it should be. Able There's no to. wrenching and things going on There's here, is it? Absolutely not. No. It's extremely gentle. Okay. Do babies get skeletal problems when they're born? I would assume yes, judging by the fact they've got to get a head this size of something that is not that size. <laughs> it all get a bit squished, wouldn't they? Okay, so you've got to remember birth is a natural process. Yes, so but I'm right, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk to most mums and they will tell you that even if things went perfectly well, um, sometimes you know, just that constriction in space will cause issues. And then there's lots of ish, uh, scenarios where things don't go to plan. Mm. So if you've had an emergency C-section, forceps, um, von Tuss or suction, we do see that there's skeletal defects or sometimes it's really obvious when you have a cone-shaped, cone-head baby. Yes, not uncommon either. Not uncommon. The, uh, not something. uncommon. Yeah. Uh, so what are the best techniques for mums to use at home, Dorothy, to soothe their babies? See the baby touch and take the time to listen to your baby. So it's okay to hold a baby. You can't spoil a newborn. So mums in today's society have conflicting advice, mm. like your baby's got to sleep in a bassinet. Well, hang on guys, it's just a pet in the world. Get time to know your baby. So touch, being still. So if I hold a baby, my body re represents a mattress, so I keep my body still and I do the movement on the baby. Right, that little gentle, <coughs> methodical, yep. which is where music is really great. And also if you're lying on the sofa, which I spend a lot of time with my babies, lying on the sofa, can't move, got a baby on me, baby's sleeping, can't possibly move. Um, what do you, what's the advice for colic or reflux from you first, Dorothy? Um, ensuring if the breastfeeding mothers, they look at their diet and we start from the diet and there's certain food groups that can affect babies, food intolerances. Then we'll look at something using natural remedies. Mm -hmm. Um, then I would suggest a wellness holistic person to have a look at them and then I'll go down the medical lane. I will always, if you've got a really severe reflux or colicky baby, encourage you to go to a paediatric right. specialist in that field, not to somebody like me up the road that right. somebody said I'm really good with colic babies. Go and check I it can out. support mm -hmm. you, I can give you the tools, but sometimes you need a combination. So you mm. need a village around you to get you through that tough time because it's a really tough time. Yep. It's really hard looking at your diet because everybody will say, can't eat cabbage, can't eat this, can't eat that. It's more the big three food groups that I look at first and then I'll look at some others because there are other foods that can affect right, you as okay. well. Adela, with <coughs> colicky babies, as a chiropractor, you can help? Yeah, what we, first of all, I think what Dorothy's talking about is so important. With colic, you can't tell what's wrong. You've got a baby no. that's crying all the time. And it's awful. And mm. it's awful. And so the first thing to do is, you know, if you've been told to suck it up or that's normal or it's okay, babies are meant to cry, but your gut instinct is telling you something's wrong. Right. This is where Dorothy and I are really big on empowering parents to actually know, follow your gut, go out and seek, even if you have to see multiple practitioners until you find the one who listens to right. you and gives you the help you need, do that. And that's what we're here to do, is empower parents. Mm. And so with colicky babies, um, yeah, absolutely, we see lots of them in practice. And chiropractic does help, as, long, as well as many other things, and right. as well as having someone who gets Excellent. you into a great routine. Well, thank you both very much for joining me. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've actually had a colicky baby before, and uh, it had uh, so the, sort of the touching on the head. It was an osteopath, not a chiropractor. Yeah. That obviously similar to what you do, and it worked a treat. Actually, it actually helped. Uh, so thank you very much for coming in. Thank, thank you. you for having thank us. You.